So welcome back to the shop guys. The last plane that I restored that was really rusty was a lot of work. I did everything by hand, a lot of it by hand. I did use a roll lock polisher, but man, I got after I got done with it, you know, you spend the better part of a day uh, and it's just a ton, a ton of work. Many of you guys have told me that there's a better way to, to take the rust off of tools, these old tools that we're trying to restore, whether it be an old Stanley hand plane or I've got a couple of my my, my babies here, these prize axes. Look at this one. You know what this is? This is very rare. This is a Grand Force, vintage Grand Force Brooks. American double bedded style axe. I've never even heard of one before. Very rare. This one. <laughs> That's a cruiser. Collins Cruiser. You don't find those every day. So these are some of my, some of the ones that we'll be working on this uh, when, when the weather changes, we go back into the shop this winter. So here's what we're going to do today. So we're going to do a test and find out, is there something that we can use to, that's going to be easy, a chemical uh, that can strip the rust off of these to save us a ton, a ton of work, especially for those of you who are restoring tools that may not have a full shop. Maybe you don't even have an air compressor or you don't have a wire brush grinder or these things. And it, you're relegated to doing everything by hand, which can be very discouraging uh, just because it just takes so much time and time is something not all of us really have. So here we go. The two most popular rec things that I keep hearing in the comments that are recommended to me are white distilled vinegar. This is supposed to be like magic, according to the comments. I've never used it. We'll find out today. The other product, this was sent to me by one of my subscribers here, is called, uh, and I'd never heard of it, Evaporust. Oh, goodness. Let me take this call. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> All right, so if, this is Evaporust, rust remover, and what I like about this is no acid, safe on the skin to eyes, it's biodegradable, non-toxic. So that's always, a, uh, that's always a made in America. So enough, does it really matter? Let's try them. So here's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna fill this guy up right here, uh, halfway. So about to the height of these planes. So we'll have to take off the wood. I'm not gonna even take these apart because I want to just kind of see, just for example, I'll take the wood off of here. But what I wanna see is we'll, we'll dip, oh goodness, brass. Get the right screwdriver, get a good screwdriver and it'll never strip out on you. So what we'll do is we will, uh, I'll just leave that little post on there. I think I will. We'll take the handles off. This one is cool. It is a number four, Bailey's number four. This is the one, this is the, the one that I have been missing. The number four Bailey. I don't have one. I, I've got, uh, not in the, in, the, in the top quality, the top notch ones. I've just got uh, some of the lower end planes. So this will be the first one. This I've been looking forward to restoring this one all summer long and I'm going to do a nice job on it and that will go right there on the on the rack with my other fancy ones and special ones. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the iron and the chip breaker back on here and we'll dunk it, right? We'll just dunk it, we'll fill it half full. So here's how the test is going to go. I've got this, this container filled up with the, the evaporust. We're going to put two, or each, the, we're going to put two uh, planes in that are pretty much similar in their condition. If you look at them right here, they're really close as far as the rust. That look like they were, I think they may have even been in the same place, almost identical. So it's a really good for a test there. So we'll put the number four in the evaporust. Now I'm only going to go halfway. I've got all of the, will that fit in there? Yeah, I think so. I'm only going to go halfway so we can kind of see, we can get that kind of contrast between the two and I'll put, is that going to even going to fit? I've got these two axe heads. These are two that are going to be coming up for restro, restos this fall. Uh, this is the Collins and I, you can see that they also are very comparable wise in rust. Is that going to fit? Oh, that'll fit. Uh oh, that was really bad what I did. I just poked a hole in my container. Again, Granddad's treasure saved the day. <laughs> I had na I kept stored nails in this. He always did. Xerox Dupont antifreeze in an anti-rust can. Man, could this not be more perfect? <laughs> the, the antique guys are just clawing their their eyes out right now. 
Oh, the patina. Look at that. I've forgotten already. All right, upside down. All right, so we'll put this up here, fill this about halfway full right there. Oh, this is much better. We're not going to poke a hole inside of this one. Okay, now we're going to put in our plane. And I need a little bit more in there. More is better with everything except for salt. I guess some cancer. Okay, so there we go. And we'll take the axis. This is the Collins. Halfway down, we'll do the, the dip test. All right, let's try the white vinegar. Okay, so while that's doing its deal, I very, very stealthily went down into the, the larder and borrowed a couple gallons of Mrs. W's white vinegar. Don't let me forget to replace this before she needs it. I took the last ones. Okay, so we have white vinegar here. The extra one, just, ooh, that is really strong smelling stuff. Okay, so then we'll put the, uh, oh, I didn't get this thing taken off here. Let's take this guy off of here. This is a nice, that's too big. This is a nice little plane right here, a number five. A number four and a number five are the ones that I have liked, to, the sizes that I've liked to use the most. They seem for just, for the common guy, this general purpose type of, type of things that it's re they're really good. And these being the Baileys, the Stanley Baileys. Oh man, what a, what a treasure. I cannot wait to this. We're gonna have to make, I think all of the pieces, everything is complete on these, except they both have a broken rear handle here. So we'll have to be making a new handle. I'll probably do that this, this fall. I've never made a Stanley handle from scratch before. These are rosewood. I don't think you can get that anymore. Look at that. I just love brass. I, I don't want to put the, oh, there's another one there. I don't want to put the wood in the, in the vinegar. Even though they're, you know, they need to be replaced, we can still use them as templates. And that's really critical to have that, that template there. Okay, did I put the, I put the iron and everything back on? You know, you know maybe, I, probably, I, you're gonna get better results taking it apart, but I just wanna see kind of the dunk, that half rust removed and half not. Okay, so the five will go in the white vinegar. I'm gonna have to add to that a little bit. And then we have the Grand Force Brooks axe that will go in there as well. So we can see that. I'm gonna add a, ah, oh, that's probably enough. I don't think we need to add any more. We'll let these guys stew overnight. Viral rust, distilled white vinegar, and then we'll take them out and see. So welcome back to the shop, guys. It has been, what, 12 hours that we've had the number four, number five Stanley Pl Bailey Plain soaking, as well as the Grand Force Brooks and the Collins American Double Bit Felling Axes. I'm excited. I woke up this morning and I thought, oh man, I can't wait to go see, see what happened after these things have been soaking. So let me bring you up here a little bit tighter we'll, uh, and we'll check and see which one, if, if, if any, worked. So let's start with the evapo rust here. And I have not seen these yet. We're going to see them together for the first time. Wow, would you look at that? That is amazing. So, well, look at them. See that mark right there? That mark, that delineation there between this, this the contrasting colors? This is the hardened cutting bit. Uh, they did a nice job with that. And look how far it goes back. That means you can, the axle will last a long time. Some, some of the lower end ones I've seen have just a really thin hard mark that you, over time you would file that back and you would you, essentially you wear the axe out. This is gonna last a long, long time. You can see, oh, that, that is really beautiful. You can see the Made in Sweden right there and the uh, Brooks logo. Here's the thing. My, my the axes that I've restored in the past using grinders and buffers that would have been completely most likely gone or diminished to the point where it, where it would have been difficult to see. Here we have the factory stamp mark in there that is just as crisp and clean as it was when it was first made and we've, we've lost nothing. Even the factory, look at that, the factory paint is still on there. Uh, that, that's amazing. I mean, there is not a bit of rust on there. We can clearly see the, what we got there, the three and a half pounds. And I don't know if that's the, what that is, that's the metric system or, or what that is. 
That is incredible. I'll tell you what, guys, my days of removing rust off of tools and restorations by hand and with wire brush and all that are over. Never again. I mean, the effort that goes into that compared to this, I didn't do anything but pour some in a can and, and go to sleep and come back and all my work is done for me. That's amazing. That is amazing. Look at this. Wow. I mean, that's one thing cleaning up an axe head, but it's a whole another deal trying to get into these guys with their nooks and crannies, all that. I mean, that is absolutely perfect. Look at the contrast right there at the water line. Not a bit of rust. We didn't remove any material. We don't have any scratching to deal with. It's even got the, it's even left behind the japanning in there. That's beautiful, beautiful. And this stud, it's got down in there and, and the stud looks like, I mean, this looks like something that was brand new at the hardware store. Not a bit of rust on it. Chip breaker. Incredible. Incredible. Look at the iron. Or the chip breaker there. Excuse me, that was the cap. This is the chip breaker. You can see not a bit of rust, even right there on the screw where the water line was right there. Wow. That is, I mean, you can only imagine how difficult it is to get the rust out of all those little things. I used to go in there with little wire brushes and sandpaper. Not anymore. And I'll never do that again. That's amazing. I'm not a scientist, but I know one thing. If it's doing that, that means it's good. <laughs> it's, it's doing something. If it's fizzing, it's good. If it's fizzing, it's working, right? It seems logical to me. Let's pull it out and see what it, what it did. So what's up with the four monks here? Well, it does, it does good too. Look at that. So there is a little bit, is there a little bit of rust still on there? Is it clinging? Yeah, it's, it's just basically clinging. I could kind of see it uh, through the liquid there. So where the evaporust, everything falls off on the bottom. This one, it does eliminate it, but it, it does cling on there a little bit. I mean, I think a little bit of water. And, and that would come right off there. I, there is a little bit of orange color maybe in some of the cracks, but that could that might just be a matter of just leaving it in for another 12 hours or so. But I'd say overall, that is highly, highly effective. Let's look at the two there. You can see the difference. You'll, you'll probably see in the video there, I mean, there's just a sheen of rust on there. Obviously, the evapo rust is completely thorough zero rust left behind where there's a little bit of something going on there. But I, I think, I mean, with just maybe a little bit of a scotch bright pad, I mean, a minimal, minimal bit of elbow grease on there, and you're going to have, you're going to be pretty satisfied with that. I mean, that's, that's really good for just a common household item. Wow, that's, I have to say, that's, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Had I not seen this one, I would be completely stoked with that, uh, with the white vinegar. How does it look on the plane? Okay, so we've got the Bailey number five here. So we can see right there, so we got a little bit of rust. Will that come off with the... Still pretty good. It's right here where it was heaviest. It's still hanging out in there just a little bit, but this whole front part looks clean. Let, let me show you the difference here, let's see. Can you see the difference? Zero, zero rust on the on this one. Still just a hint of it. And then we have right here in the nooks and crannies, we can see what do we got going on there. That looks pretty good. Still some in there though. It's not as, it's definitely, it's really effective. I mean, it's, I, I have to say I'm happy with that. Maybe a little bit more etching or darkness in the metal. Perhaps we can, we're seeing there with the vinegar, but I don't know for sure. It might just be that that one's been out drying for a few minutes. Let's, let's do that. Let's see what happens in here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Nice and clean on the cap. And we've got the chip breaker in the iron. Let's pull this off here before we have a disaster. 
Here you can see, again, it, it's, it's really done a good job, but it, it's not perfect. Like, let's compare the two. Let me grab this one here and wipe it down. Get the, the goobers off there. So we can see the right one here is the Evapo Rust, and the left one, the Four Monks White Vinegar. What's that? Schmoo on there. Still pretty good though, to save a ton, a ton of work. But I'd have to say, uh, for me, uh, I, I'm not, I, I wouldn't use the vinegar unless that's all that I had. I would, I'm gonna order some more of this stuff here uh, because it doesn't stink up my shop. I mean, that's what one thing, I don't wanna, that's it. Actually has this very light, very light. I, I can't even smell it over the vinegar right there. I can't, it's very light. Uh, nice smell. No acids, VOCs, fumes, safe on skin. So non-toxic. Wow. I mean, it makes me want to, I'm, I'm going to walk around here and find rusty things and drop them in here. See if some tools that I've pretty much discounted to be gone or goners or hopeless cases uh, can be uh, resurrected. That truly is amazing. I mean, it, that opens up for me a whole world of possibilities of things that I have put on the back burner that uh, were just it's just too, like I just don't have the time. I, I would love to get the I would love to get that tool restored, but I just don't have the time. This just just changes that whole thing. I mean, look at it. Amazing. And what I like about it is the is you're not doing any damage that I can see to the tool. And it doesn't matter how many holes or nooks and crannies you can. You know, I mean, perfect example like the little Stanley, this little Stanley odd jobs here. You know, how do you pop, how do you get in there and do that? It's got a heavy texture on it. How do you how do you get all of that rust and, and goo and goopers and everything out of there? I'll tell you how you do it. You get a you get a can of this and you drop it in there. And then you go do go your way and do what you want to do and you come back in a few hours and and, and, you, and it's all perfect. So amazing. Just amazing. All right. Well, hope you enjoyed this comparison. And uh, I'll put a link to this stuff. I don't know. I, I'd never heard of it before. It was, as I said, it was sent to me by one of my subscribers. Um, I'll put a link to that in there so you can get some yourself. But boy, we're, we'll be restoring some planes this fall, huh? All right. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video.